Hi, I'm Sarah from Cookstars Hull Eastern Holderness. For the lockdown recipe for today, I am going to be making fajitas. This is something a little bit different to baking, especially if some of you might not be able to get hold of any flour. All the ingredients we're going to use today should be quite readily available and we've managed to get hold of them all really, really easily. So this is something that's really great for you to cook for yourselves, for teas, a really a different idea for getting the kids involved. The children, uh, younger children can get involved with it. Older children might want to do this by themselves or it might be something that you just want to make for for the for the kids for something that they will enjoy eating and um, for the recipe it's done in sort of three parts the first thing I'm going to do is make a marinade put the chicken in the marinade that's then going to go into the fridge while that's marinating in the fridge I'm going to then make the salsa and the guacamole which is a really really nice fresh alternative to having the, the shop bought things this recipe is really really good really nice fresh ingredients really tasty and it's also a lot cheaper than buying some of the fajita kits that you uh, might be used to using and you'll see it's just as easy as using one of them so for the recipe for the marinade we need um, a lime some oil some chili some garlic and some coriander that's all we actually need I've got some extra ingredients as well which I'll go through if you want to add them these recipes are really flexible so you can add things if you've got them if you haven't got things you don't need to panic um, you don't have to follow the exact recipe these are just some flavors that you can go in and following the method really rather than following the exact recipe no quantities particularly um, matter if you've got a slight if you've got more of one thing and less of another then you can replace things you can replace the chicken for kidney beans if you wanted to do a vegetarian option or just add more vegetables so again it is really really flexible with everything that you're going to do um, we are starting with the the marinade because the quicker we get the chicken in the in the marinade the more flavor it's going to be taking on and the um it's going to start to to take on the flavors and to to tenderize the chicken as it as it um, sits in the marinade so that's the first thing that, that we're going to do i'm going to um start by doing the marinade and um, a lot of these ingredients we use some of the they're interchangeable between the dishes so some of the ingredients we're going to use now for the marinade and the others then we're going to use the other half of them later for the guacamole and the salsa so uh, it's not a lot of ingredients to make quite a lot of nice different tastes tasty food so for the marinade i'm going to start off with a lime if the lime feels a little bit hard and like that it won't um won't squeeze very easily all you need to do is roll it around a little bit on your board to start off with and then you it should loosen it off a little bit I've obviously washed my hands you will see that throughout this recipe we're going to be washing our hands lots and lots of times this these recipes are really good to get the kids involved because um, it's lots of different smells flavors textures and it's just a great way for getting kids to experiment with their ingredients and to learn a little bit more about the ingredients so lime holding it from end to end in a bridge hold so we hold our hand like a bridge and we just cut that in half end to end half of that lime is going to be used for my guacamole and my salsa later the other half is going to go into this marinade so I'm just going to squeeze it out we start with the lime so if any seeds do happen to pop out then we can dig them out without having to dig in with all the other ingredients we don't tend to get a lot of um, a lot of seeds when you're doing it with a, with a lime as much as you do with a lemon if you haven't got can't get fresh limes you can use lime juice you can use lemons you can use lemon juice it's just a real the, the acid that the, that we need the acidity acidity that we need for it so that lime has now been squeezed through my fingers into there i'm going to add just a tablespoon of oil and then i'm going to start adding some of my other ingredients we're just going to wash that lime off my hands I've got some nice hot water there just to keep dipping my hands in obviously after I've cut, handled the raw meat I'll be washing my hands really really thoroughly and that's really important just to get across to any of the kids if they are doing this that once they've touched the meat they must must wash their hands also once they've touched the chili they've got to, to wash their hands as well so um, lime and oil is in there I'm now going to use a clove of garlic for my clove of garlic I'm going to take both ends off the garlic 
and then with the blade of my knife, so with my knife nice and flat like that, on there, heel of my hand, and I'm just going to crush that down. That will then mean that that skin comes off really, really easily. So I've now got a nice peeled garlic clove. I'll just get rid of those little bits into there. If you've got a garlic crusher, you can use a garlic crusher for this. I like to just chop it up into really small pieces. So chopping it first of all lengthways and then turning it around and chopping it other ways. Brilliant thing with this is if kids are getting involved in it, they you don't have to worry about things being perfect. You don't have to have actually everything nice and even. It's just giving it a go and letting them enjoy making it. So my garlic is going to go into my marinade got a chilli. Some of my chilli is going to be used in, again, some chilli in the marinade, some of it in the guacamole and salsa later. doesn't matter what colour chilli you use. And if you haven't got, um, you can't get hold of fresh chilli, you could use chilli flakes or you could use some chilli powder as well. So it's really not important which type of chilli you use. You just put in a bit of heat into that mixture. So I'm going to chop this chilli in half. And again, half of the chilli is for my other dishes later and the other half I'm going to use for this one. A lot of people think it's the seeds in the chilli that is the, um, the bit that's got all the spice in it. It's actually the little white membrane that attaches the seeds there. So I'm going to just chop this again using a bridge hold again, cutting that in half again and then I can just slice down and take out that white membrane and any seeds that would be attached. If you want it a little bit spicier, you can leave that bit in. So I've taken them two little bits off and I'm left with this. So again, cutting it down into nice thin strips and then each of the thin strips, turn it around, chop it up into little pieces. I'll do the same with the other one. it all the way down. If you like things spicy you might want to use a little bit more chilli. If you don't like it as spicy you can use a little bit less. If you don't like chilli at all of course you can leave it out. So you can see there my nice little pieces of chilli that I've got. That goes into the marinade and again once you've touched the chilli it's really really important to wash your hands so you don't touch your eyes or your face afterwards. <clears throat> the last ingredient to go into this marinade is coriander. Fresh coriander um, is quite easy to get hold of at the moment. I've got some here. But if you haven't got fresh coriander, some of this coriander leaf is, is just, as, just as good to use. So I'm just going to get a little bit of my fresh coriander and I'm going to use other bits in my other dishes. No surprises there. And you can just chop this up nice and small. Just chopping it one way and then turning it round and chopping it another way. Just because I've got the gadget, you don't have to, I have got one of these Metzalunas, so I am just going to chop up my chilli and my coriander using this, so I get some nice small pieces mixed into the marinade. Take them bits off there, and again just brush them bits there. That just then needs a stir, so give that a good stir and I can already smell the, the lime and the coriander mix in there so it's already got a really nice fragrant kind of a smell to it. That is absolutely fine for your marinade. If you did want to add any other ingredients, different things that you might want to add, um, I've got some Cajun spice here which is really quite nice in it. As I've said there's chilli, chilli powder or crushed chillies can go in there. You could put a splash of Tabasco sauce in there if you wanted to. Um, paprika, cumin if you want to put some cumin into it. Black pepper works really well. So I'm just going to add a little bit of my um, Cajun spice. Just a little sprinkling of Cajun spice is going to go into there. 
And I like to use paprika. I think paprika adds a real nice kind of background flavour and it adds a little bit of colour as well. So if you are used to having the um, the packet mixes, then you'll be used to that seeing that kind of red tinge to everything that comes from the paprika. So if you're trying to replicate something that you would normally buy in a box, then this is a really good um, ingredient to use. So that's all mixed up there, ready to put the chicken into. I'm gonna just use a different chopping board on here. I've got a couple of uh, chicken breasts here ready to use. Um, one chicken breast will probably do about two people to be fair because you add in lots of other ingredients and you're going to use some wraps and everything so you don't need a full chicken breast per person. This, I'm making this for the family of four so this is plenty for all of us. You can buy the chicken already in strips and if you've got that that's brilliant especially if you don't like handling raw meat. Some people really don't like to touch it so that's a, a, a brilliant way of getting around that but actually touching the meat as I say it, it's a different it's different textures to, to feel so you can get children involved with this but um, they might not like it and you must make sure that you're washing your hands really really thoroughly when you're finished. I'm just going to chop mine down into thin strips. When you're making your fajitas you've got to remember that at the, the end result you want to be wrapped up and quite long so everything that you're going to cut to go into it is going to be long and thin rather than chunky and that way you'll get that fajita a little bit um, more precise so thin strips some of these might be a little bit long so just cutting them on an angle like that and I've just chopped that bit up as well you don't have to use such a sharp knife if you were doing it with kids you would use a, um, a less sharp knife so I've got my pieces of chicken like that and I'm just going to drop them into the marinade. So while I'm chopping up the rest of the, the chicken and um, I'm just going to turn turn off the video while I chop up the chicken and then I'll come back to you. All of my chicken is now cut up into them little strips so now they're all in that marinade fully coated in that marinade flavour is going to start going into them because they're not too big the flavour should start penetrating into the, the chicken so that you get a nice flavoured chicken all the way through that's going to sit in there for a little while while I prepare my other ingredients so I'm just going to put a bit of cling film on it pop that in the fridge and then I can get on with making my guacamole and my salsa My chicken's gone in the fridge in the marinade, so I'm going to get on with making the guacamole and the salsa. This is really good, really good to make again with kids. I normally get the kids involved with making this because it doesn't matter if it's a chunky guacamole or a chunky salsa. So they can chop things up the best that they can and put it in there and you still get all the flavours in. It's really fresh, it's much tastier than a little jar of salsa and it's so, so easy. So I've got my two bowls. One for salsa, one for guacamole. And the first ingredient that uses that I'm going to use is an onion. You can use a white onion, a red onion, a spring onion. I tend to prefer to use a red onion, but at the moment we haven't got any, so I'm going to make do with the white one. We're only using half of the onion for these two, and the other half is going to go in with our fajitas later. So, bridge hold, hold in our hands like a bridge, putting our um, knife in between, and we cut our onion from top to bottom. I always say onions have pointy tops and hairy bottoms so we remember to cut you also you can see lines along it so you don't cut across the lines you cut with the lines some people try and cut it in half that way and it, <coughs> it makes it a little bit more difficult to cut so in there like that half of the half of the onion is going to go in with the fajitas later half it is going to be split between my guacamole and my salsa going to hold my hand like a claw, we call this a claw grip, so we're going to hold my hand like a claw, nice and steady on the board, flat side down, because we don't want it rolling around everywhere, flat side down, and we just chop off that pointy top. We can leave the hairy bottom on for now, and then hopefully that skin should peel off quite nicely. We want fairly small pieces for this. So what I'm going to do for this one, but again, don't worry if you're doing this with children and they get it, they're just chopping and hacking it a little bit. As long as I've got a knife that they're safe to use, it's absolutely fine. You might want to chop it up 
and let the chop it up into slices and just let them chop it up into smaller chunks. What I do here, bridge hold, knife, the point of the knife goes in towards the end and bring it down. Do that all the way along and you get, you just cut into little pieces like that. If you want it really fine, you can cut it that way as well, but we're not worried about that. So again, claw grip, holding my uh, onion together, gripping it together, chopping down, and you'll see from this that I've got some nice smallish pieces. So those pieces that are now nice and small can go half into my bowl for my guacamole and half into the bowl for my salsa. I've probably put a little bit more than half into the salsa because I want a bit more onion in that one. Some in the guacamole as well. to one side. Also, same ingredient that we need, half of the lime juice is going to go into one. So I'll squeeze half of that, this is the half of the lime that's left over from uh, the marinade. So a bit of lime juice in that one and a bit of lime juice going in that one. This is another thing that the kids really, really like doing, like getting the muscles, using the muscles and really squeezing really, really hard to get all of that juice out of there. So that's put the juice out of there. The other two ingredients that are exactly the same for both of them is coriander and chilli. So the rest, some of the coriander from before, I've just carried on chopping up. And the other half of the chilli from before, I've chopped up as well. So the lime juice is now in there. So I'm going to put some of my coriander in with the guacamole mix and some in with the salsa mix. Same with my chopped up chilies. Some in one of the mixtures and some in the other one. Some recipes for guacamole does have, do have tomatoes in them, some of them don't, so it's a personal choice if you want to add the tomatoes to them. I've got cherry tomatoes but it doesn't matter if you're using salad tomatoes. Just chopping them in half and then into quarters and then just chopping down on there. And it does make a bit of a mess. And again, when it all plops out, the kids really like that. So the salsa needs lots of tomatoes in it. There's just one cherry tomato there that I'm just probably going to scrape into my guacamole mix. And the rest of my cherry tomatoes I'm just going to chop up and put into my salsa. So it doesn't have to be neat, as I say, I'm just kind of roughly chopping it because it's going to be a nice um, chunky salsa. If you like it a little bit smoother, then obviously you will need to chop your tomatoes up a little bit more. So I'll just do a few of these. Into there. And then the last ingredient that we're going to put in is the one that is different for the two things. So, so far, we've had pretty much the same ingredients in both dishes. The onion, the lime, the coriander and the chilli. It's all gone in to there. Maybe one more for the salsa. And I want to include all of these juicy bits as well. And again, this is best to be done before you cook off the chicken because if this all sits in here, it starts to soften up a little bit and you do get more of a salsa sort of a consistency. So tomatoes have now gone into both of them. This is where we are now going to separate the two things and put different ingredients into them. Give my board a quick wipe. There. And then for the salsa, I'm going to add some peppers and for the guacamole, I'm going to add some avocado. So I've got my avocado. Again, seen it before, bridge hold. Chop that in half and you should be able to twist it and it comes apart like that. I can then chop that bit into half and that should just peel off nicely. It does. 
And again, when the kids doing this, they they like the feel of the. Um, some of them do like the feel of the avocado because it's all a little bit slimy, and a lot of kids like the slime. So some of the kids don't like it; they like slime, but they don't like how slimy some of the food feels, which I find quite strange. But there we go. So that avocado just roughly chopped up into there. I'm just going to use half of it for now. The other half, if the, the stone just comes out like that, and again you can chop it. So this could, can get quite messy, but as long as we're washing our hands afterwards, it doesn't really matter. So put a little bit more guacamole in there. This is quite a nice soft one, sometimes they are a little bit harder. If they are harder, it is better to make it a little bit more in advance because that then means that they will start to soften in the mixture. So, I've got really, really dirty hands. So I'm going to wash them and then I'm going to mush up my guacamole. So just with a fork, I'm just going to mush that guacamole mixture together. And you can do it a little bit now and then leave it for a little while and then when you get it out, to use when everything else is ready give it another mush and you'll find you've got that lovely guacamole consistency so just in there like that and you've got a really nice fresh fragrant guacamole ready to use into the salsa i'm going to add peppers and that's going to add the crunch. So we've got a different, we've got different textures in this dish. So you've got the like the mushy guacamole, and then you've got a nice crunchy salsa. It doesn't matter what colour pepper you use. Some of the pepper is going to be used for the fajitas as well. I've got a nice selection of colours here. So um, I'm going to use a variety. I'm going to use a little bit of yellow, and I'm going to use a little bit of um, red, just to add a bit of colour to my dish but whatever you've got works okay so with the peppers chopped it in half and then with your thumb if you just put your thumb into behind the stalk and just pull it that should take out the seeds and everything you can just tap out anything that's left in there so I'm just going to use half of this and I'm going to chop it up into a few strips like this and then chop down. So children like chopping up the peppers like this in class. We do a lot of this in our cook stars classes. So we get it cut into strips for them and then even the really, really little kids can just chop away making some nice chunky bits of peppers to go into there. So that's my red. I've not quite used half of it. I've just used probably about a quarter. And I'll do the same with my yellow. Just chop it down into strips and then into chunks. There we go. I'm then going to give that a stir and get all of that lime and onion flavour all over there. If you wanted to at this point, you wanted to add um, some more chilli flakes or a little bit of black pepper, that would be fine. But you can see again, we've got a really lovely, fresh, fragrant salsa going on there. That again, it'll cook it when it just sits for a little while. It'll just break down a bit and you'll have more of the consistency that you might be used to for a salsa. So, so far we've got our chicken marinading in the fridge. We've got our guacamole done and we've got the salsa done. So now I'm going to get on with cooking the chicken. That's my chicken all marinated and you can see that the flavours have started to go into the chicken. Sometimes you all, depending on how long you've left it for, sometimes you might sort of see that the chicken is actually starting to cook around the edges and that's because of the, the chemical reaction that's gone on with the, um, the lime juice. So for the oven, the, cooking it in the oven, I'm going to just put it all in at the same time. So I'm going to put about half of my mixture of chicken into there. And I'm going to use around about 
half of this other mixture, making sure we get a couple of them tomatoes in there, like that. And I'm just going to give that a stir. This is going to go in the oven at about gas mark 5, 190, and it'll probably take about 20 minutes. Because they're nice thin strips, they shouldn't take too long to cook the chicken. It is important that we check the chicken is thoroughly cooked. But just at the moment, what I'm doing now is just getting some of that marinade mixed in with the other ingredients that are in there. And then that can go in the oven. So I've had my oven on for a little while. That's going to just go into the oven for a little while. I've also got a pan of uh, a wok on here. You can just do it in a normal frying pan. I'm using a wok and I've just got that on really, really nice and hot. If you're doing it, if we are stir frying it, just because of the speed that we do it in, you do start off with the chicken and do this slightly separately. So you don't need to add any oil because you've already put oil into the marinade. So it's really nice and healthy. So that's just gonna go into there, nice and lively. And that's going to cook for a few minutes in the pan. We're going to cook the chicken off first, get them flavours. We'll start to release some of the flavours from the marinade. That'll start to come out. We'll start to char off the chicken ever so slightly. And you can see already that, that chicken is starting to cook. So, into there, I'm going to add the rest of these ingredients, the rest of my fajita ingredients, and I'm going to stir fry that for a little while. That's then going to take on all of the flavours from that marinade, is going to start going into the onions and the peppers. They're going to soften and they're going to brown slightly. So, it'll only take a few minutes to do. Already you can start to see that the onions are starting to colour up with the um, marinade that was on there. I'm going to continue to cook this and I'll come back to you when everything is done. <coughs> We're now ready to start putting our fajitas together. In our pan that we did our stir frying in, you can see how this is all cooked nicely. The onions have softened and so have the, the peppers. So that would be ready to, to put into a bowl, put onto the table, ready for everyone to dig in. Also in the oven, I have got my um, oven baked fajitas, which again, giving that just a little stir. They don't quite char quite as much, but they do cook and they are still really, really tasty. And to check any of them out, you might want to just get a fork or something and just cut them, cut your biggest piece if you can, just in half, checking that it's cooked all the way through. If you have a meat thermometer, you can put your meat thermometer or your um, temperature probe in and you should be checking that it reaches at least 73 degrees. I normally say to go for uh, 75 just to be on the safe side and that one's gone up to 75.6 so that's absolutely fine so put that back on there i'm going to put both of my lots of fajita mix into the same bowl so what we would do if we were having this as a as a tea we would have the fajita mix the um guacamole the salsa also some grated cheese you can buy ready grated or you can grate it yourself. Uh, grated cheese out on the side would have some sour cream. We also put out um, tortilla crisps. In our house they're called Mexico crisps. So we'll put some Mexico crisps out and then just put the plates out and everyone can dig in and help themselves. So it's a really nice kind of sharing dish to do and everyone kind of just kind of gets stuck in a little bit. Doesn't matter whether you want to use the bigger wraps or the smaller wraps. Um, as I said before, because our children like to call it superfood, they tend to use the smaller ones because they like to keep on making these mixtures up. So I'm going to do it on a smaller wrap here. So onto my wrap, I'm going to do a little bit of guacamole. I'm not doing it all the way to the end, but I'm just doing it down the middle and leaving a little space at the end there. I like to put my cheese 
on next to where the hot the heater mix is going to go because that gives it more chance of of melting so some of my fajita mix is then going to go on top of there and as i said before we've done it in long thin strips so that it's long thin strips as you put them in so making sure i've got a little bit of everything in there some of my tomato can go there another nice strip of chicken and some of that lovely onion okay on top of there I'm now going to put a bit of my salsa and because that's been sat for a bit it's got a bit, little bit loose and there's a little bit more juice in the bottom of there so salsa is just going to sit nicely on top of that with the addition of some sour cream on there this can then get folded up this is where it might get a little bit messy so fold it over turn if you can if you can see what i'm doing here you can turn the bottom up and then twist it around so you then have a fajita which you can pick up and everything won't fall out of the bottom so everyone can have one of them wrapped up bigger ones smaller ones whatever you want to do and that is lovely served with your tortilla crisps or mexico crisps as we like to call them Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy your fajitas. Love to see some photographs of you enjoying them. And we'll see you again sometime. Bye.